Hey everyone, it's Big Dan. In our last video, we met Lucian Lachance of the Dark Brotherhood, and were given the task to assassinate an old man named Rufio. We have learned that Rufio is staying at the aptly named Inn of Ill Omen, which is on the green road between the Imperial City and Breville. Today, we will be completing the quest, A Knife in the Dark, and exploring the reasons why Rufio was a Dark Brotherhood target. When we speak with Lucian Lachance, he paints the picture of Rufio as a poor old man that makes an easy target. Know that Rufio is old and weak and sleeps his days away. You could kill him before he even has a chance to wake, if you so choose. Okay, but why did someone hire the Dark Brotherhood to kill this poor old man then? This is a theme we are going to explore throughout this series on the Dark Brotherhood in Oblivion. It's always interesting to consider the motive and understand why the people we are hunting became targets for a Brotherhood assassination contract. Now, when I first played this game back in 2006, I didn't think much of Rufio. He just seemed like an easy target and I kind of felt bad for him. He spends most of the day sleeping and really cannot defend himself against an assassin. In most playthroughs, I simply killed him in his sleep and moved on with the quest line, but not today. Let's dig into Rufio's story a bit and see what we can learn. When we arrive at the Inn of Ill Omen, we can speak with the friendly innkeeper and gather some hints from him. Rufio? He's an old codger. Been living here for a couple of weeks now. If you ask me, he's hiding from something. But what do I care? He pays his tab. His room is downstairs, in what I like to call the private quarters. Use that hatch in the floor over there, but don't expect a warm reception. We can also speak with Minerva, another resident of the inn, to get her impression of Rufio. Not a lot to tell. He doesn't much like company and spends most of his time in his room. Mannheim thinks he's hiding out from someone. So let's pay Rufio a visit. If you confront him at the inn, he will be absolutely terrified. Who are you? What do you want? I ain't done nothing. It shows pretty quickly that he was expecting someone to come after him. So what is he hiding from? Let's explore. Oh please, no. I can pay you. Name your price. Anything. Anything. Please, just let me live. Just go away. No, please. I didn't mean to do it, you understand me? She struggled. I. I told her to just stay still, but she wouldn't listen. I had no choice. Ah, so I see. Rufio killed a woman. This gives us a clue as to the motivation for this contract. Someone close to Rufio's victim must have hired the Dark Brotherhood to take revenge on him. And we can actually learn who put the hit out on Rufio by reading the Black Horse Courier issue with the headline, Night Mother Rituals. The paper details the rise in people performing the Black Sacrament in the Imperial City and Adamus Philida's efforts to put a stop to the Dark Brotherhood. In the last paragraph, we learn about the man who hired the Brotherhood to slay Rufio. To be sure, Adamus Philida is not one to issue empty threats. Indeed, the Black Horse Courier has learned that one Claudius Arcadia, until recently a resident of the Talos Plaza district of the Imperial City, is now residing in a cold, dank cell in the Imperial prison, and his house has become the newest Imperial Legion outpost. So before you take the law into your own hands, dear reader, remember, you'll go further in life with a warm smile than a cold blade. And if you've got a grudge that won't be soothed, a score that can't be settled, you can always move to Morrowind and have the government-sanctioned Morag Tong do the killing for you. If we visit the Imperial City Prison, we can speak to Claudius Arcadia. So I wanted somebody murdered. So I prayed to the Night Mother. What is that? A crime now? They even took my house, those bastards. Ah. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Hiring the Dark Brotherhood to murder someone ain't exactly legal, you know? If we obtain Claudius' journal, which can be found in his house in the Talos Plaza district, we learn more about his involvement with the Brotherhood. Entry 1. I've made up my mind. I don't care what it takes. I'll have my revenge. I've heard the stories about the Dark Brotherhood, 
about how they'll come to you if you perform some kind of ritual to their night mother. I don't know who or what the night mother is, and I don't give a damn. If I can do it, I will. I'll give the Dark Brotherhood anything they want, so long as they do what I can't. Entry 2. I've learned how to perform the ritual and have procured the necessary items. The bones and skull were easy enough to get, but the heart and skill were a bit more difficult. I'll make the preparations in the cellar. Entry 3. It worked! Last night I was visited by someone, a representative from the Dark Brotherhood. The Night Brother heard my prayers. The money was exchanged, and the man promised me I would have satisfaction. I don't know where he's hiding, and neither does the Dark Brotherhood, but as soon as he's located, Rufio will die. If we break into the basement of Claudius Arcadia's house and head down the stairs, we can find the remnants of his Black Sacrament ritual still lying there in the basement. I find it pretty interesting that the Imperial Legion didn't clean this up considering they've already moved in and are using it as an outpost for their operations. So Claudius hired the Dark Brotherhood to assassinate Rufio. We don't learn any more details, but from his diary and our conversation with Rufio, we can piece together the story. One day Rufio mugged, or possibly raped, a woman. She struggled and cried out while he attacked her, and in the ensuing struggle, Rufio killed her. This woman was someone that Claudius Arcadia cared about, perhaps his sister, or his daughter, or his wife even. Claudius knew he wasn't a fighter, but he wanted revenge. He wanted Rufio dead, so he performed the Black Sacrament and contacted the Dark Brotherhood. With the sacrament complete and the gold exchanged, Rufio's fate was sealed. Unfortunately for Claudius, Rufio caught wind of the plot and perhaps reported him to the guards. Claudius was thrown into prison and had his property seized. But it was too late to save Rufio. The Brotherhood was already prepared to visit him, so he fled to the Inn of Ill Omen, trying to keep a low profile. And that's where we find him. After killing Rufio, we can take a quick nap and Lucian will visit us again. So, the deed is done. How do I know this? You will find that the Dark Brotherhood knows a great many things, for you are now part of the family. We have three dialogue options here. Indeed. For the slaying of Rufio is the signing of a covenant, the manner of execution, your signature. Rufio's blood, the ink. Now, you embrace your fate. For the slaying of Rufio is the signing of a covenant, the manner of execution, your signature, Rufio's blood, the ink. Now, heed these words. The slaying of Rufio was the signing of a covenant, the manner of execution, your signature, Rufio's blood, the ink. As a speaker of the Black Hand, I directly oversee a particular group of family members. You will join that group and fulfill any contracts given. You must now go to the city of Chaden Hall, to the abandoned house near the eastern wall, into the basement and attempt to open the black door. You will be asked a question. Answer thusly, Sanguine, my brother. You will gain entrance to the sanctuary. Once inside, speak with Ochiva. We must now take our leave of each other, you and I, for there is much work to be done. I'll be following your progress. Welcome to the family. And with that, we are officially a member of the Dark Brotherhood. So what do you think? Did Rufio really deserve to die? Well, he clearly doesn't have a clean conscience or a clean record. He has killed somebody himself. So if you are of the mind that a revenge killing is justified, then yes, Rufio did deserve to die. But if you are of the mindset that he should have been brought to trial and maybe turned into the Imperial Legion instead of assassinated, then he really didn't get justice. 
like many of the quests in the Dark Brotherhood quest line, I feel a little bit conflicted about assassinating Rufio. I mean, he clearly wasn't this innocent old man that he sort of initially portrayed as, but I don't necessarily think that he deserves to just be murdered in cold blood like this. But that being said, this is Cyrodiil, and the justice system there doesn't exactly always pan out very well. Maybe Claudius didn't have any confidence that Rufio was actually going to be brought to justice. I mean, he was already walking free as it was, so maybe this was the only way to give him justice. Anyhow, what do you guys think? Did Rufio deserve to die? Leave a comment below and let me know. In our next video, we will visit the Chaden Hall Sanctuary and meet with our new family members. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Big Dan for more Elder Scrolls videos like this one. I'm going to be going through the entire Dark Brotherhood questline in this series, so stay tuned for that. You can access all videos in this series in a playlist linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. This is Big Dan Gaming. Until next time, see ya!